Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my first NACES, and I've been having a great conference, so thank you so much. Um, all right. So, um, most data sets um, that com are commonly used in geospatial analysis are re relatively recent, containing information for the last uh, from the last 20 to 30 years. But what about older data? There might be different reasons for needing to use geospatial data from previous historical periods, from a researcher studying a past phenomenon to input for machine learning algorithms and computational modeling. Historical uh, print maps are a great source of data uh, about the past, and map libraries and archives contain millions of such maps. However, too often the data is locked on paper and cannot be leveraged easily in uh, GIS systems. So how can we extract that data? Um, traditionally, this has been done through manual feature extraction, as we've just had an example, um, where uh, the features of interest are digitized using tablets or heads-up digitization techniques. It works, but it is very expensive and slow. For the last 15 years or so, some researchers have um, also been experimenting uh, with automated uh, or semi-automated feature extraction. The starting point of an automated um, workflow is always a raster image that is obtained by scanning the historical print map, georeferencing it, and cropping it. As for the actual feature extraction process, different methods uh, have been proposed and each method has its pros and cons. Um, for instance, pixel level classification, supervised or unsupervised, is good at identifying hue-based aerial symbologies. In the example shown here, the forested areas, symbolized in green, were extracted. However, the method does not perform as well when applied to other types of symbologies. In another method, the template-based extraction, we look for occurrences of a specific pattern throughout a map. This approach is good at identifying individual symbols, for instance, the quarry symbol shown here. However, here again, the approach uh, uh, is of limited use for some other types of symbologies. The object-based image analysis, or OBA, is a method that is used extensively in the analysis of um, satellite and LIDAR imagery. That approach uh, com combines two powerful processes. First, the segmentation, where the pixels of the map are grouped into objects, and then a multi-step classification, which is done at the object level and uh, using a series of detailed rules. The rules use knowledge about the object, such as um, their geometric properties uh, and their context, to decide to which class they belong. That method is quite versatile. However, there seem to be very few examples where it has been uh, used on historical maps. Because I thought that OBA might have real potential uh, for this type of materials, I chose to focus on it um, in this project. So my research questions uh, are the following. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah. um, can we use OBA to re reliably automate the extraction of geospatial information from print maps? And in particular, can OBA be used to extract complex symbology types? I chose a historical Soviet military maps as my case study, and this for several reasons. First, um, they are fascinating maps full of valuable historical information. They also contain complex and dense symbology, which was the perfect case for uh, OBA. And finally, they come in very large map series, which is important because putting um, a feature extraction workflow into place is time consuming. And um, it only makes sense to do it if it can be applied to many maps. Um, so, the maps I used reside at uh, the Wells Library at Indiana uh, University Bloomington, they are part of Teresa's collection, 
and they were scanned, georeferenced, and cropped uh, by the library staff there. Um, I chose uh, eight map, uh, eight map sheets from a topographic uh, series uh, at uh, one to fifty thousand scale. The maps published in the 1930s represent a region uh, in the northeast of the Belarus Republic. All rasters have three bands, red, green, and blue, and a special resolution of 2.11 meters per pixel, which is pretty high resolution. Together, the eight rasters represent an area of 60 by 36 kilometers. In this analysis, I focused most particularly on extracting land cover style features. Belarus has many wetland areas, so identifying wetlands was an important uh, aspect of the project. I targeted seven cl uh, classes such as forested areas, wetlands, uh, water bodies, um, etc. The software used was eCognition, uh, which is a, a, a software package specialized in OBA uh, image analysis. And I also used RGIS Pro for pre- and post-processing steps. So the workflow I followed was the following. Uh, I first acquired the eight uh, indi uh, individual raster files. I then prepared the full raster for the entire area of interest, which included uh, creating a raster mosaic and performing a simple color correction um, in RGIS Pro. I, um, developed uh, the, and tested the, uh, the rule set in eCognition. This is done on several raster subsets, that is small snippets taken from the large raster. In the rule set, I included uh, several segmentation rules to create the objects. And I also included several um, uh, series of classification rules. When the rule set was ready, the next step was to run it on the entire raster. And this was a major computing process and took about two days and a half to complete. Um, I then exported the results to, of the analysis to two different formats, a vector shapefile and a categorical raster. After that, I proceeded to the accuracy assessment in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, this is an important step uh, whose, whose goal is to formally quantify the performance of the workflow. It is done by generating sample points and computing the percentage of classification errors in the sample. Finally, I created a thematic map. No, uh, yeah. Finally, I created a, a, a thema th thematic map to um, illustrate um, my results. I will now uh, try to give you a sense of the type of um, strategies that can be used to capture complex symbologies. For instance, uh, there is a great variety of blue objects on the map. They can represent several types of water bodies, and they can also represent a wetland. So how do we distinguish them from each other? And just looking at wetlands, um, they come with many symbology variations. Uh, for instance, based on whether they are passable or not, whether they are isolated or not, and whether they are forested or not. So how, do we, how can we recognize their commonalities? Some of the OBA, OBA uh, criteria that can be used to identify wetland lines are the following. First, have they already been identified as belonging uh, uh, to the water class? That is, are they blue objects? And then, what is their length, their maximum width, their length to width ratio, their area? Are they oriented east-west? How close are the objects from other water objects, etc.? Using this type of criteria, we create a series of rules to identify all wetland lines. Then we write a series of growth rules to swell the wetland lines uh, and merge them um, into full wetland surfaces. As you can see here in orange, uh, uh, we, this is what we obtain as full, fully swollen um, uh, wetland, uh, wetlands. And there are many more such strategies that are used throughout the rule set, but I won't have the time to uh, detail them here. 
So this is the vector layer resulting from the full analysis. We can see the seven uh, classes represented in different colors. And note in particular the striking number of wetlands symbolized in orange. And also the dark green ones are the, the, the forested wetland. Uh, here is a zoomed in uh, view showing the original map and the resulting vector layer side by side. In terms of uh, object count, uh, there were several millions of objects at the beginning of the analysis and about 44,000 uh, at the end. And you can see uh, the final distribution by class in this graph. Here is the confusion matrix that I generated for the accuracy assessment. The result is that the overall accuracy of the analysis is of 90.6%. If we remove the border class, which predictably, uh, which was just the edge of the map, which predictably had an accuracy of 100%, we get an accuracy of 89.08%. Note that uh, the accuracy varies from one class to the other, but it remains more or less between 80 and 96%. Um, these are actually good results for that type of analysis. Uh, OBA is a promising method for extracting features from historical maps. In particular, it is good at identifying symbol symbolization that differs mostly by its uh, ge geometric properties and by its relation to other neighboring features, such as wetlands versus uh, water bodies. It uh, also works to distinguish color-based symbolization, like forest uh, versus open land. It is good at identifying and eliminating unwanted features like contour lines and trees. Overall, it works uh, fine as a mostly standalone technique. In terms of uh, lesson learned, developing an OBA rule set is a significant investment of time, even more so than I thought originally. Uh, OBA takes quite a lot of computing power, uh, which I learned the hard way as I was trying to uh, run this analysis on my laptop. <laughs> And uh, finally, uh, some of the objects remain difficult to distinguish uh, through OBA. For instance, the characters that appear in the labels versus the symbols for small standalone buildings. So I ended up, in this case, eliminating both uh, in my analysis. Um, so to handle those elements fully, a template-based approach could be useful. Uh, which could be applied as a post-processing step after the main OBA analysis. Thank you for your attention, and I will now take any questions.